Hi, it's Bill from Hunterwick, and this is the Nerd Stalking Audio Podcast on YouTube. In episode one, the panel launches Nerd Stalking by discussing the two eternal nerd touchstones, Star Trek and Star Wars. And I have a fiery panel of obsessive nerds with me today. I have Jackie. Ahoy. I have Laura. Hello. Over there's Chad. Yo. And I have Ross. Make it so. <laughs> We're going to start with the Star Trek already. Oh, yes. Oh. It's on. Right on. It's on. We're talking about Star Trek. Since it's a nerd podcast, we are legally obligated to talk about Star Wars. So I had a couple of episode title examples that I can put on the podcast when we publish it. I wanted to run it by you guys. First one is, hey, did you hear about that new Star Wars movie? Another one was Star Wars, The Boner Awakens. <laughs> And I also have Star Wars, no fucking Jar Jar. <laughs> That's a given. Mm. I want to point out that as we're talking about Star Wars, that we're not going to do any spoilers. There's um, maybe some... Any. Darth Vader's Luke's father. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, man! Obi-Wan dies. That boat has sailed. But does so. he? But there's maybe some slight stuff. Yeah, I should say I have my tickets for Friday the 18th, 5 p.m., and yes. I do not want to know anything more about it than I already do. So you're one of those guys that made the pre-sales for Star Wars. Oh, my 50, God, yeah. 50 mil. I bought them in October, the day they came out. Yep. I And already all the Thursday night shows were sold out. Show well, me Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying 50 mil for pre-sales. It's higher than that now. And maybe yeah. approaching 100 million. Yeah. Just, and uh, I was making a note here that the box office tracking figures, the opening day is going to be at least 200 million. Yeah, they're going to need a new <laughs> graph for this because it's going to go right <laughs> off the charts. Like 11 isn't high enough. It's just going to go beyond 11. Can I tell you I'm yeah. old enough to remember when the first movie, as we called it in those days, or A New Hope, was it wasn't the greatest called a new movie? Hope. No, it was just called Star Wars. And at that Star time, Wars. it was the greatest movie of all, and it was the biggest box office grossing movie of all time. Do we have a comparison of the figures between those two? I don't no. think we do. No, we don't. Because that would be something adjusted for inflation. <laughs> and where would you draw the line? Like from the original movie, from the re-release, the re-release of the re-release. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm I'm talking, yeah. When the first Good one point. came out, it was such a revelation because everything was new. And I'm talking the original, the tangible with the puppets and the Jim Henson and and that mm. and the models that were made out of broken up models. So you yes. mean the real star, the take, first Star Wars? That take sort of adjusted in. The, yes. So you, uh, it's right. a good point though, because when Star Wars came out, it was in the theaters the for generation. over a year. It was the yeah. number one box office champ of all time. Yeah. And then five years later, ET came out. Right. Yeah. Creamed it, but then when the special edition came out in 1997, 98, then it beat ET. The reason I'm asking they counted it, it together. The theaters, it's been three it, or four. from the initial one to this is because the, this one is is marketing to millennials, right? So these are the kids that oh, yeah. when we we but saw it, it for the first time. Well, I think they're trying. But they're, but when we saw no, it, there was can, nothing no, to compare see, it to. I, I agree with Laura. Market to the millennials. You don't have to. It's Star Wars. Kids can't. are going to go. What they're they what I think they're going for in these movies is nostalgia. This is you think? The, it's a ritual oh, it's, now because it's yeah. it's not just buying your tickets for a movie. We all do that for all the movies. Sure. But with Star Wars, it's it's become more well, you like, have to it's like Rocky it. or a picture show, yeah. right? Where yeah. it's now an event. Everybody buys their tickets tickets in advance. You stand in line and you wait to go see it. And you you doesn't matter if you're there for the midnight showing on the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday. You need to be in the in the beginning. Well, Absolutely. and if you're of the generation, and whether it's good or bad, we did that for episode one. One, two, which yeah. was a huge well, mistake, right? that we saw with our dads yeah. at yeah. Point. The right. for the but, first one anyway but if you're of this generation that that has followed it from the beginning they don't have to market it to you it's a given you have to go well it's, no it's, I, it's like in your dna well what i'm not gonna go well i've seen all the others well no but, but we I've were see this we one. were caught shot you know i was i was caught i waited four hours in line to see the phantom menace and then I'm the so next sorry. two movies yes exactly <laughs> the next two movies were such a disappointment they do need to market with me which is why in the trailer um, the very last scene with Han and Chewie says, we're home, that hit like 
all the right buttons. <laughs> that hit everything. I don't everything. think you were that hard of a sell, though. Clearly not. Well, because it has oh, the original cast. One trailer. To, to be yeah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah well, the I Millennium think... Falcon, TIE Fighters, Zooming, Snow. Yes, I mean, well, I was, right. I was saying but... it earlier because Harrison Ford said he would do Indiana Jones until the day he died, but he would never play Han Solo again. That's he right. said vehemently he would never do it. And he has, like, I was, he's got more money than he'll ever spend. How many planes does one cat need? So he's not doing it for Well, he money. crashed one, so, so he's he only got like more. 84 yeah, now and 27 yeah. choppers. But the, so the fact that he's doing it is intriguing to me. That but it's, it's probably out. because at some point an actor who is adamantly against the thing that made them the most famous uh, has to sort of accept who they are. I mean, because yeah. George Lucas just isn't doing it anymore. Well, there there could be that, There's but I think a creative it, difference. Maybe. Actually, I think the difference is no spoilers because I think this is just my take on the <laughs> on the theme of the movie. Is this is more of a Han Solo movie than the previous three? I think what yeah, he gets what annoyed. Star. Yeah, exactly. I think he is he is almost he is the star of this. Luke is probably not going to be. What is the deal with that? With no Mark Hamill in any of the trailers and all that. Because it's What's a that huge deal? reveal. He's yeah. got a non-disclosure agreement that says he cannot talk about anything about how his character is used in the movie. Can I, can I, for the record, say that you guys, I haven't seen. I've deliberately avoided all advertising. Good for you. About the, any, I don't know anything about the storyline, so I, you're like killing me right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sorry. the one thing I'll say, which we is don't funny know anything about, either. Anything you hear here is not speculation. Well, we know, we know yeah. that the you know, oh, the black guy is Luke's son. I didn't know that. The girl is Leia's daughter. <laughs> I didn't they know that. They get together. They have a baby. They name oh, him. Oh, for God's sake, Chad, stop. Darth, no. Darth Munchkin boy. La, la, la. He comes it's out. Actually, it looks like, it's like Jar Jar. La, la, yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Missing, it's la. like a Twilight Zone. It's episode. actually a treat on the socio-political t- uh, times we find ourselves in. That's right. No, Han not. and Chewie Which one is are living in a, in a co-op in Miami Beach. <laughs> Which one is Tarkin's daughter? He gets together. He's got a house boy named Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah Chewie represents, right. you know, the 1% that has it all, whereas everybody else is the 99% <laughs> that's struggling to feed themselves. See, what's funny is that uh, Harrison Ford has, you know, been so negative about his role in Star Wars, and Luke was the... Well, if you broke your leg on set, you'd be negative about it, too. Well, no, that was the recent movie, but he was he was negative about Han Solo from Empire yeah, Strikes Back. back. He yeah, thought he, he should die. He swore. Yeah. He swore he'd never yeah, because, play Because he, he, he maybe, you know, he wasn't the star, because he loves Indiana Jones. But everybody yeah. loves yeah. Han Solo the best. But he didn't have anything coolest. to do. He this wasn't crucial thing. to the plot. He's like the coolest... Yeah, but Indiana no, but Jones was... didn't have anything to do sure with the first did. movie, either. He was sure completely unnecessary to the movie He found the Ark of the Covenant. It didn't matter. The Nazis would have found it anyway. Hold on. I recently rewatched Raiders, and he has no role in that movie. Thank Everything you. Everything that happened in Raiders would, would have, have happened, happened without Indiana Jones. Are you serious? I'm yes. Absolutely serious. Watch it so, again. He's completely. So who would have taken? We're veering off topic. No, but who no, would have taken no, the ahead. the medallion uh-huh. that had the that had that go on the staff to get uh-huh. it translated to find out how long the staff was going to be? Subtract one from the other side because the Germans. If didn't have he that. wouldn't have been there, the Nazis would have picked it up. When they went to get it in the first place, so, if he hadn't so interfered, right. so he so interfered. They would have had so there you go. He interfered. He saved the day. No, no because, because the they, arc, still they still got, got it back arc. from him. But then in the end, they got crushed by it. They still would have been killed by it. They still would have been true. killed by it. <laughs> and he would be still teaching his class with. And uh, it still you know, would have ended up being boxed in fact, up in a warehouse. The guy no, he had who had nothing got, to do with that. No. The guy who got killed by the airplane propeller, even. Could have just bent down and get a screwdriver, and the same thing happened. He well, really, because he, he really didn't even get punched not, into the thing. That applies to absolutely every, but every I, movie. I, ever I challenge made. you to watch it again, and he is not. I, we just watched it. We but the interesting it. thing is that in Star Wars, it's still a fun movie. I was six years old when that came out, and it was the Han Solo couldn't have been cooler. The, the yeah. couldn't have been a greater role model, pirate or not. He I was know, the coolest thing. He's a, a smuggler. Lot. Well, because I loved Maverick, and so Han Solo was a space sure. Maverick. Why do you he think had the everyone white shirt, loves the Malcolm black Reynolds? Vest, the yeah. cool hat, yeah. even the gun strapped to his yeah. leg. Like Malcolm Maverick. Reynolds is a reincarnation of Han Solo. That's why everybody loves Malcolm Reynolds in Firefly. Yeah, it's the same thing. Smugglers. Mm-hmm. Except Malcolm he's West. a star of the show. That's why. See, that's they the learned. Difference. They that's, learned yeah, from Han difference. Solo being super popular. Canceled that's why episode nine got can- was where it got canceled. Isn't that? <laughs> I don't know if they and learned. I don't know if it still, really paid off. Yeah, yet, really. And yet, it's still yeah. people love it. But I think the reason Han Solo was was excited to come back and why he signed on to do this movie because he really had no reason to do this movie. He's stinking rich, as we've already said, is because I think he has a major part and he drives the plot. That's my guess, and I think yeah, I'm sure that's exciting to him. Well, he he said and before Luke, Luke will show up in. in the second movie mm-hmm. be the star and Han will be dead maybe I, I have read for whatever it's worth I have read online statements that he's made saying that 
the Indiana Jones character to him is more of a of a full character. He's sure. more well rounded. He he has more depth to him, whereas he felt that Han Solo was more two dimensional. And absolutely, you time. only have to watch that scene at the end of the Return of the Jedi, where you know that awkward discussion between him and Princess Leia, where she says, you know, it's about Luke, and he says, that's okay, I'll stand aside because yeah, they've already kissed twice. Uh, and his acting in that scene is so disturbing, it's so bad, because he knows this is the only thing I've got in this movie, and yeah, you know, it's kind of lame. So, well, and probably at the time, yeah. he had no idea that there would be this this subculture of people that worshipped Han Solo as the coolest guy Well, by the third space. movie, I think that's probably a given. He's got a little more swagger yeah. in the third. Well, attempted swagger. He was good at the swagger in the first movie, for sure. Fair enough. Did you guys see this performance at the AMAs of, uh, I have to look up their name, it's Pentatonics. Pentatonics? Yeah, and they did an a cappella version of the John Williams music. Oh my. Oh, that would have been interesting. Did you see that? that? No. It was very it. strange. I've been playing the Star Wars music. In fact, it's my ringtone right now. I've been playing the Star Wars music nonstop <laughs> in, in anticipation of this movie. It was weird because it was an a cappella group, but they were backed by a full orchestra. So Wait, isn't that, oh, so that's not, not acapella. Yeah, so it's kind of. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, so basically, work. they were humming. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, so they were just well? like a group of. They were like a barbershop quartet. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, 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 so uh, I have a question. It's not grotesquely <laughs> off topic. What is that? sound that's in all scary action movies now sorry i thought you were going to say what's that wah sound in your headphones now yeah I'm no. Say, i have no idea no that's the sound i thought you were saying that's what's the that sound that falls in your head isn't that you no. ever you might be since i hit my head that time no what is that <laughs> uh, you know it was in batman's and everything are you, are you talking what about is this, that the, the new space you mean what a, sound? what instrument is that i don't yeah what is that every it's time the there's a, I think it's a, oh, I yeah think it's, it's like it's, it's just dread. have, they, it's just have dread. they identified it on the scale that this is the sound that causes dread in yeah, people there's a scream that's and this is no no lie there's a scream that's been used in almost yeah, it's called the wilhelm scream the wilhelm scream yeah. that's been used in movies since the 1920s i think and or, which well, one maybe is that? the 30s it goes ah! and it, it was used in, in raiders of the lost ark <laughs> and actually no no you do it again do it again it's yeah, that's Star actually Wars probably closer. Too. It's in Star Wars, where the Star Troopers fall off the ledge. It's in, every it's in Raiders movie. of the Lost Ark. It's almost in almost every movie. It's yeah. called that the is Spring. hilarious. And it's brilliant. Now, is it uh, the same? Uh, is it, is is it the, same the same person who did the recording? Is the same one who who recorded cats going Rawr! every time somebody walks? <laughs> yeah, but like, what have you ever heard a cat? A cat never does that when you go. Sound when it moves out of the way. You throw throw a tin can in the in the laneway, and some cat's always there going. What is that? What's the point of throwing anything in a laneway unless there's a cat to go? I You're got, not going to hear a dog go, woof. i got to exactly. be honest with you, that, that I have nothing. had a cat my entire life. I'm not the same cat, but I've always had cats in my house. I have never heard that sound come out from a living cat. Every have you ever put a, a cucumber can? behind your cat? What? Oddly enough, no. Okay. Not a cucumber. This is a thing. This is a thing. <laughs> no, Why are your cats eating? Not specifically a cucumber. This is next a whole time. other topic. No, I know. Ross, next time, cucumber. next time your cat's eating, are, should I put a cucumber on the floor and watch his reaction because it will freak <laughs> out. <laughs> It's funny you mentioning the Wilhelm scream because uh, I think probably a little later I'm going to touch on the Star Wars video game that just came out called Battlefront. Don't touch, it. Don't, Battle touch Front. it. don't touch it. Battlefront. Maybe don't uh, touch it. <laughs> that, there, it's in that. Stop touching it. Well, is it? Yeah, the you're Wilhelm shooting. Scream. You shoot. You shoot a stormtrooper near. Oh, that's brilliant. It is excellent. My only my only concern with it as a parent is that it is a first person shooter yep. kind of thing, and I'm yep. not that keen on that. I love my my son's nine. He, he plays the Lego Star Wars movies. Yep. They get shot, they break They're into so Lego funny. pieces. Yeah. And then they, you know, they don't die, they, they spawn, just come back right? and they right. go, they keep going. The idea of uh, running through, you know, uh, yeah. Ice Planet hot yeah. and shooting at uh, there's, the um, is a little... There's no gore. No, but it's it's just the whole gun thing. Though, yeah, too. no, I understand yeah, that. Same thing with the first person shooter with zombies. That's why that they're so mm. popular because you're not actually shooting a person. Right, yes. they're already that's dead. how they justify it. They're so already dead. never too young to desensitize your child. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you say that. And two years ago, when I was uh, working on my porch, and um, full confession, it took me two years to finish it. Uh, friends of ours came by, and uh, out of the blue, they said, "Oh yeah, we just your finish? porch is finally done. Oh, it's done." <laughs> <laughs> Painted. It's painted. This is news. It's painted. It's painted. It's painted. I took the police tape off air hours ago. Can it's we shoot it? Tape. Um, is he said? Oh, we just you know we just finished watching an episode of The Walking Dead. 
and his daughter's the same age as my, oh my son. Gosh. Oh, that's a little. Yeah, that's, that's a little. That's, that's, that's a little so much. Talk about desensitized violence. They'd watch Scream. They've watched The Walking Dead. They watch it every week. And this is a nine-year-old. I so that's, that's good parenting right there. Yeah, yeah are you kidding? That's... When my kids are asleep and I'm watching them Walking Dead, I have the volume down for the <laughs> exactly. You, you know what? Those kids yeah. should watch Paranormal Activity the first no, one. No, I don't think I so. Because I think that's a no. winner. That's Nobody should watch that's that. Some awesome Nobody parenting. will ever sleep again if they watch that movie. It's terrifying. I was wondering how you guys feel about the idea that Marvel has Marvel overexploited the genre. I say no. Chad, you probably have oh, you something to note. say about Superhero this. Superhero overkill. There you go. That's exactly yeah, what I'm you know, talking about. I got to say that bitch, I, bitch, moan, moan. I waited. It's the golden age of this shit. Exactly. Oh, I've got it. something to say about that, too. Well, you know, it's Jesus. funny that it is the golden I have a age. The problem is, is that... There's there's two things going on in the superhero world, and that is the movie that is a movie, and the one that is just like sensory overload that is tapping in with the video game culture, right? Like the Avengers what? movies are just smashing for two hours, right? And there's not a lot of meat in those movies, whereas movies like Ant Man was great. And if they make more yeah. movies like that, I'm I'm happy to watch them. The new Daredevil show. Great. I gotta say, I, I'm a sucker for Guardians because it was really fun. Guardians was great. Or, uh, but Guardians uh, had Winter, a, Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Soldier. It was good. It was dark. You know? I loved but it. Was, but those ones really had great development. Yeah, there was something going on with the story. Like they were I think doing it just something. But what you just who's... said is there's the now a huge story. spectrum of different types of superhero movies. There's not so a spectrum. I think that? there's two. I think there's there's the ones just like... Just don't go to the ones you don't ju- like. Yeah, yeah. you don't know till you go, right? But it's, well, that's, that's a bad thing. Well, yeah. as a big Avengers well, fan... Well, the ambulance. Yeah. The two Avengers movies are two of the worst movies that Marvel has played. I thought they were fun for different reasons. For totally different reasons, I thought they were fun. what was the worst? Iron Man 2. That was the worst. That was the worst. Actually, yeah, yeah. Iron Man 3. I really Iron liked Suit. Iron Man 3. It's great. Working. Star Trek was always on as a kid, and I always found it kind of boring. So I didn't really... I, it was always on in the background. Right I don't think I ever watched an episode I've been doing from this beginning since I was five. Yeah. When I, so did I, and I watched the movies, although... I remember being uh, Star Trek One came out when 1979. Oh yeah, seventy nine. December seventh, nineteen seventy nine. Yeah. That was a terrible, Tired. terrible movie. And I remember it wasn't it, it, I was living in this little place in Vancouver Island, and I saw in the same around the same time I saw that movie, and I saw Private Lessons, which was one of those. Teenage, oh, I teenage, 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 Hmm. Star Trek the first one was a t- I will say this is that uh, two summers ago all of the, the they, they've remastered the yep. Star Trek shows they put in new special effects they've redone the ship and they ran them all in Bravo and I watched the whole series it was a it was a great series it's fantastic but it, it's apples and oranges <laughs> to Star Wars totally it's a completely different <laughs> wait did I say something it's, funny it's much more <laughs> because I don't think I said so something funny you so contented and happy when I am completely hands when, uh, I don't understand absolutely that's so all true all the <laughs> programs that have existed through the history of time uh, dealing with space why is there this rivalry why can't you enjoy well no you can't but it's, it's like Quentin Tarantino said about Elvis and the Beatles is that you know there's Elvis people and there's Beatles people you can like them both but you can't like them equally little Pulp known fiction. fact George Lucas uh, went to one of the uh, filming of one of the episodes of Star Trek way back in 1969 is that true he met Gene Runger that's wow true. That's, uh, right. These are the Voyages, Volume One, Two, and Three, covering the three seasons. Uh, talks about how we met, and he, he, George Lucas admitted that you know one of the influences for writing Star Wars was Star Trek. Wow. See, I used to know Star every Trek. episode name from there you Star go. Trek. I've seen Brad every Peter. episode multiple times. <laughs> I know all of the plot lines and the characters, but at the same time, I have a jigsaw puzzle of Luke Skywalker. I own multiple lightsabers. I have all the collectible cards: the yellow, the red, and. The, the blue. blue. I, I have, have all of those. And then, yeah. You know, have at the at the at Valhalla, we have. Sorry, what a was book that? At is, Valhalla. That a, is that where you go to die? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, it's a Viking it, thing. Yeah. See, We're already there. It's where you buy your party supplies. <laughs> ladies shows. and gentlemen, Odin's in the room. Because, Odin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Valhalla is the eternal party and celebration. Um, the uh, we just recently got in a book that was just published, and it is the entire card set, just. All it is is one card per page of of the Star, Star Wars, Wars trading cards. I have all of those trading cards. I have at all those trading cards too. You know, I don't even know anyone else right. who's ever heard of those trading cards. I have every no, single in fact, set. I was we were at a I show. I grew up in London where they were they were manufactured, so I actually have them in sheets. Some of them. Oh, very nice. No, I have them. Uh, I bought them after the fact, but they are now. Um, 
quite collectible. I'm just making yeah, a note really that I'm going to have to throw a link to Valhalla in the uh, description <laughs> in the show Let's notes. Do that. You yes. had to write that okay, down. Also, yeah, really, <laughs> really. Can we also <laughs> mention how terrible Family Guy is, but our great cartoon is Forget About It on Adult Swim. Exactly. Oh, yeah. there we go. Another link. Let's just throw that on there. Speaking Can of I links. tell my should I tell my story? Here's my story. I gotta tell the story. You've heard it, Chad. Um, when my first voiceover gig that I ever did, I went to an audition and it was for an HBO special, and it was uh, Gahan Wilson's The Kid, and it was to play the title role of the kid. And I ended up getting it. I booked a gig, so here I am. I was the kid. So uh, there was a lot of people, a lot of really impressive people that I got to work with. I had the honor of meeting um, Sir John Neville. Um, Ed Asner was John on John Neville. It. Eugene Levy was Eugene my, Levy. Was my, yes, shush. And, uh, <laughs> and as it happens, William Shatner. Oh. And the William Shat. The Shat. The, the Shat was. I'm uh, so thrilled that you but here's the great got thing. to meet me. He was like a. a, a what was his What was um, Colonel Clink? Werner. Um, oh, Werner Kempler. That's what, he looked like him, his character, when they animated him. And he did this. He had this really creepy, soft spoken voice. He was really, really funny. He's he a very funny good. man. He's so a very funny man. So cut to years later and I'm I'm at I'm at that doing that fan expo and I said you know what Shatner's put up with a lot in his life he's had to make a lot of a lot of sacrifices I was always very kind to the man and I talked mm-hmm. to him not as Captain Kirk but as Wayne Shatner sh- so sh- I decided I, you know yeah fine I have all these Star Wars Star Trek collectibles Star Wars and Star Trek collectibles and okay fine I'll go get his autograph it's so stupid so I walked up and I said to him Mr. Shatner we've actually we've worked together I had the honor of working with you on Gay and Wilson's The Kid and he said uh huh I said I, I was the kid you were my biology teacher and you were hilarious and he replied I'm sure I was and he didn't even look up next (laughs) that was it all of my childhood illusions shattered I'm afraid so if you ever there's a there's a video uh, of Will Wheaton that describes meeting uh, William Shatner on the set of Star Trek 5 that William Shatner directed one of the worst movies of all time. I love Will Wheaton, by the way. Will Wheaton's terrific. And uh, he, of course, was in the middle of filming Star Trek The Next Generation. There was this big um, uh, controversy about the show because the- Controversy? (laughs) Controversy. (laughs) Uh, Because the original series cast felt that The Next Generation was stealing their thunder. There was a new show, new characters, not them. They would rather have been, been a new show with them. Meanwhile, it was completely different characters, completely different times. And uh, so William Shatner and quite a, quite a lot of the people in the uh, original series crew were not favorable towards the next generation. And Will Wheaton wandered onto the set of Star Trek V. He was wanting to meet Bill Shatner, which is, you know, his childhood hero, much like me. And it couldn't have gone worse. I, I think mine was pretty bad. How did it go worse than that? Will Wheaton well, walked up to him and said, hi, I'm, I'm Will Wheaton. I'm... I'm uh, I'm on uh, the Star Trek The Next Generation. And Shatner said to him, I'd never have a kid on my bridge. I tried to be generous and say maybe he was having a bad day, but no, my point is no. if you hate your fans and you hate talking about stuff so much, why do you put yourself in situations where you're going to be faced with this? I had a question about uh, the footage that was in the Japanese trailer for Star Wars. One thing that really bothers me is the guy with the mask. What's his name? What's Kylo his name? Ren. Kylo Ren. With the, so with the three bladed light. Yeah, he's got the lightsaber with the things. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is, I, I put in a query in Google. I want to see if you guys know the answer. When I was thinking about that guy's lightsaber, so the query was, what do you call those little knobs near the handle of swords? The hilt. The hilt. No, the hilt is what you hold. The guard. Hey, very good. It's called a guard. He, okay. those, that's what those things that spit out on his lightsaber. Shh. So the guards attack, but he's going to cut his own wrist. Well, for ch- a guard will repel an on. Yeah. yeah if, but if, he, if he bends it, he's just going to cut his own well, hand off. Well, this is the truth uh, with, yeah. with, with yeah. the technology of lightsabers. It may be rigged so it only is active on the one side, even though it's glowing on They've the done, somebody's actually, some sword expert has done a video that says, yeah, this could work. Oh, please. I know. <laughs> so his sword with the kions or guards it looks to me in that trailer like especially when he does the thing where he like puts it up to her right, neck next to her face yeah. yeah the blade is like fuzzy yeah it's it's his is very kind of jad- jad- like jad- what's the deal with that out. it's like a fire like a, he's, he's really fire. badass yeah that's so really he's got a fire he's got that's a right. fiery it's, it's lightsaber like this, the the uh what were they called the scorpions in greece 
I don't know. You know they, they were the bad guys with the hot rod. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're talking about the movie. Not the <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought you were talking about the movie. <laughs> That's what I thought. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sparta. Where, where am I? Right? Right. You guys all go to Greece? Oh, I hate that movie. It's a right. movie. One of the best movies of all time. My theory is, is that he's not a full-on Sith, so he doesn't know how to construct a proper lightsaber. Oh, Mis- oh, Mr. Kata. Oh, Mr. Kata. Oh, Mr. Kata. <laughs> Um, Go ahead. I, I know absolutely nothing, and I, I, I certainly don't know. Why do we talk about that then? But I would speculate. Now, this movie takes place how far in? 30 years. 30 years. So, is it that. not also uh, possible that the technology, like we know in our lifetime, 30 years, technology has changed substantially, that perhaps lightsaber technology might also have evolved in different ways? Or so maybe it's old and the batteries are low. Well, that could you know, be. Because it's be. old technology and they don't have the, the latest Apple it's update for it. Well, that's a reasonable the, idea. the new order looks pretty badass. That was my estimate was that. It just was something that looked cool to J.J. Abrams. So I, you know. I think that that's yeah. probably nice. Yeah. You want to do something a little different. I'm a little worried about lens flares, but that's a different. Yeah, I actually saw a quote from him where he was promising to use them only when absolutely necessary. So all the time. The lightsabers or lens <laughs> the flares? lens flares. Yeah. So every scene. So the guy playing that badass is the yep. guy from Girls. Adam Driver. Right. Yes, absolutely. So I hope he doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why is that? Because he's great and everything. I like him on girls, but his uh, the he's way very, he, he's very uh, emotive or yes. something. It's just he's, yeah. You know, when I found I, out I that know what you mean. Ronan you was know? being played by the the guy from the Big Brother from Dead Like Me, and he was uh, he was the brother in uh, Wonderfalls as well. No, Pushing Daisies. Yeah, and the same guy who played the Pie Maker in Pushing Daisies. That's who played Ronan. Yes. Oh, you mean you're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy? In Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, also, Tall, oh. nerdyish guy yeah. who. Very was cool. he? He was a hobbit too? No, he is Thranduil. He is the king of the woodland elves. In which movie? The Hobbit. Ah, uh, see, I Sorry, I watched sort of watched I sort of started watching the first Hobbit. I turned off the second Hobbit about five His minutes. His name in, is Lee Pace. And I'll never watch it because it's like, yeah. what a, a heap of well, steaming he is an shit. Absolutely beautiful. Elf. Well, he I might, will watch I'm the sure. movie and fast I'm forward sure. and pause just to right. see just if he's expected. Surf the net for screen captures of him, but it's like it was <laughs> a terrible, no, terrible, no, spectacular, no, beautiful elf. So, but I know what you mean about Adam Driver. He was in a movie that was shot in Toronto called The F Word with. Um, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, and and he's very you know 2015. His his mannerisms is is I don't know how that translates into the the world of Star Wars. Well, he's wearing actor, a mask, so let's hope he's acting. Well, we saw him in something, <laughs> I saw him something else, and he was acting. Are you trying to shut us all down? Is that what that? <laughs> well, you're trying to shut down? I mean, I I'm gonna it. hopefully Genius. give him the ben, the doubt that he's not gonna be the idiot he is on. I, no, of course you know, not. But I it's it's about the, around, the but uh, people will quite often when they're playing a character are not playing themselves. So no, but sometimes people come through, right? Yeah. Sometimes they didn't. Matter. I, I think he's a good actor. I think he's great. And and I saw him in another movie, and I can't remember what it is. I think it was a, a period piece, he and he was really good in it. Yeah. But I think that it's about that coming through, oh. regardless of anything but else. The, but I think he's in a mask the whole time. But have you seen the trailer? I think it was in, in the Japanese trailer. You see Darth Vader's like like melted uh, mask, mask yeah, was, which you gotta wonder how he got it. Did he go to Endor? Did he say hi to the Ewoks? Did he say, did he say hey, well, Wicked? That's I'm right. just gonna take this. Wicked now. sold it on eBay. Yeah. He's like. Get me that. <laughs> Is there an Ewok <laughs> eBay? Yeah, but there was hey. Now, is that Wicked or Willow that he was talking to? <gasps> Same. Oh, Willow. Same. Oh, Willow. Same actor. Oh, damn. Yeah, I went new money. In the trailer, you can see them salvaging off of uh, Star Destroyers that are crashed. That's yeah. true. So, um, so yeah, but, but perhaps they're looking for trinkets or. But they things. melted that that that. You know what was the he suit? Was made? I would think. Though, I always thought that even though well, the, I had a Darth Vader plastic. lamp, right. what wow. I, remember, I remember it being assembled and having fire. to put it together and pop the eyes in. It had red eyes. Oh, I don't know. It was like a night lighty thing, right? Yeah. And so whenever I, I what are you talking about? <laughs> I had this Darth Vader head nightlight when I was a kid that never yeah, really gave off any real. That's what you want to see. <laughs> with red eyes yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jackie. Go to sleep, honey. Here's but you know, it, it didn't. It was it was one of those things that lost its thrill very fast because it it had glowing red eyes. <laughs> That's it. So my I had a piece of kryptonite rock that glowed green, and that was far more entertaining at night. But um, that would keep the the super. What a confusing away. childhood you had. <laughs> That's right. You, you have you, you have Darth Vader's head in a rock that kills Superman. Superman yeah. <laughs> um, 
But I always imagine, even though I always think of Darth Vader's helmet as being made of cheap plastic because of the toys I had, right. in the movie, really, wouldn't it have been made out of metal? I think or it was some polymer. sort of some kind of some sort of non meltable thing. Well, it was, it's, it's but it was armor. melted. It didn't melt in that. We saw it charred, but scene. we just we just watched Return of the Jedi. I would say I agree. It I would be made of the same thing that the stormtrooper armors made. Which I think it is close. vital. Oh, no. yeah, we saw it burning. Oh. Right. But we don't know if it melted and That's went true. concave. That's true. So suddenly, what is it made out of? Like aluminum? But to uh, allay oh. your fears about Adam Driver, his voice sounds good as Kylo Ren. He does not sound contemporary. He sounds. He sounds like Ronan did. Like he's exactly. Like he's all spooky. Yeah, sure. I'm sure he's going to be fine. This is, and I think he's in a mask, so his face is what would be distracting. Right? <laughs> yeah. Over to Horseshack. Okay. Okay. So yes, I see. I was going to say I pick up that point that it's probably made out of the same kind of whatever polymer that the that stormtroopers armor is made out of because it would be armor. But having said that, cheap plastic. Pretty much every stormtrooper that I've been shot at has fallen, so well, I yeah. can't really speak to the yeah, but he's Darth Vader. durability he's Darth. of of Frickin their. Vader. Oh. Yeah. I was going to swear there, but then I thought. So I don't know. I don't think they're. I mean, they're not apples to apples. Now let's yeah. also be clear that his helmet is two pieces. That's true. So do they separate? It also seems to me that it would be a real fingerprint magnet. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Somebody that's a lot of polishing. Around, like buffing him. Constantly. Yeah. You'd have one of those magic which, chamois which, everywhere yeah. he went. He's got to have a fluffer. Me, I have to leave. Yeah. Yeah, but how awkward is that? Can you <laughs> buff my helmet for me? That's just not. Buff my helmet now. Well, I think it's say that. <laughs> 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 that's what they didn't show. That's, that should that have been in the lot. director's cut of Star Wars yeah. or Empire Strikes Back when you see all the, the Death Star, uh, or in the first one, Death Star guys with the thing. There's one guy who walks around there polishing all their heads. <laughs> 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 and one guy adjusts his helmet. He's like, oh, shit, I touched it with my... I just put hand cream on. <laughs> and you missed the spot. Over to the left now. So, you ever put a hand cream on and then go to leave your house and you can't grab your doorknob? Yeah. And then you're, you're twisting your head. So in, in, in Star Wars, if you if you look at the helmet closely in Star Wars, it is it is dull. It looks like there's fingerprints on it, or maybe dust. Who knows? Who's and helmet? then you look at the Dark. helmet, Darth Vader. Yeah. And then you look at the helmet in, in Empire Strikes Back, and it is gleaming, yeah. spotless, but, and don't even go near me. You know what? But you, you know see, what? But you what? Notice it's Peter Cushing. There we go. Peter Cushing's not in the second He's movie. Like, his in the first one, like, over. I love you, Darth Vader. <laughs> I think I think Peter Cushing was constantly like, like just doing talking this. shit, I, making Darth Vader doing, feel bad. I think possibly. he was doing it's this. Like, oh, you with your old stupid religion. No, 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 that was the guy that got his uh, you know throat constricted. He was like, oh, but you, can't you? Faith you in no, but what did Peter Cushing say in that scene? Didn't he say that? Stop your bickering. Whatever. He's like, you could see that he was the boss. He was. The boss. I remember oh, being confused was totally about injured. that. But can you imagine Tarkin just putting his hand on top of Vader's head doing this? Quite possibly. That's right. When he's waiting, he's like, come here, Darth. I want to see if my. My, if tap, I need to tap, shave. Tap, tap, tap. No. <laughs> but you saw it, but in Empire Strikes Back, wasn't that when you saw that Vader doesn't even touch the helmet? It's put on by a magic pod. He doesn't well, it just dropped, it comes Yeah, down. it lowers on. So he doesn't, but, unless he's but adjusting the costume it. Because he didn't want fingerprints. He wouldn't have way. fingerprints. The cloak just, uh, that he comes underneath his shoulder uh, armor in Empire Strikes Back, whereas in Star Wars it comes well, over. Maybe he has other outfits. There's one that has the satin. I'm sure he doesn't wear the same thing. I mean, he's still a guy. outfit when Star Wars, no budget. Empire. Sure. budget you know you so what, an interesting thing can you imagine he wears the same thing every day he's still a no he's got to have there. different different capes smelling. yeah so we're watching Here's return the return deal the, when you're he's for. recycling in there that's gotta be unpleasant <laughs> Oof. When we, yeah, that's what the sound is. It's not his breathing. It's just like clearing out the suit of body <laughs> odor. And Hold on, I have to change my charcoal <laughs> filter. <laughs> that's why, oh, the, that's why the, cape is, me, the cape is always floating in the back because that's where the ventilation oh shaft is. Oh my, the breeze filter. <laughs> like, lucky Luke didn't oh, find this God. ventilation shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had one back bigger than that. Oh, that <laughs> but so we're watching Return of the Jedi the other day and uh, Who's so we? The, me and Holden. Oh, okay. Just Holden. Big H. Yeah. Not Kate. Kate has no interest. So <laughs> You've it's, lost it's the scene where you have you have you all all her. the different storm No, no, she was totally into Star Wars when she was little. Then that's then <laughs> she, she just became a total to girl. Yeah. So uh, the scene where they have all the, the stormtroopers and all the Royal Guard and everybody's all lined up because the, the Emperor Death Star. The Emperor is right, coming right. to the Death Star. Yeah. And Vader gets down on his knee and to give him a little bow to come in and and the emperor says um get up my old friend yeah rise rise my yeah, old fr my yeah. friend or something like that but he calls vader his friend yes and holden was like 
Emperor just called Darth Vader his friend. Yeah. I didn't think the Emperor would call him his friend. I never thought the Emperor would have any friends. Because in all other depictions of the Emperor, he's pure evil. Yeah. But there's always the master and the 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 Padawan, well, not the Padawan. Yes, but, but he calls him my two. friend, though. He it's calls true. him his friend a few times, I believe. Does he? Right? he? Yeah, but it's not like, in, not, not, they, not in a really sincere like way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, 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 but it's, yeah. it's like they send each other yeah. emails. Hey, did yeah. you see this movie? Oh, my great, dearest awesome. Vader. Yeah. 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 I don't think We were watching the one of the Lego cartoons, and there's one where the Emperor's... Uh, got a call in from Vader, and yes. Vader is asking him questions. He's oh, oh, now he's crying. He's yeah. crying. Just hold on, hold on. Just let me get over this phone call. <laughs> I don't think that was Lego. I think that was the robot chicken. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was a robot yeah. chicken one. Is that it? was hilarious. Yeah. It went on forever. Yeah, it was, yeah, okay. it was a robot chicken. It was very, very. The, the best robot chicken was the one where uh, uh, Luke is at the end of the scaffold, and Vader is about to tell him that he's his father, and he says, uh, "I'm your father," and Luke says, "No." And he goes, yeah, and Princess Leia is your sister. And he's like, what? <laughs> and then he says, yeah, and something, uh, you know, a small rebel fleet des de destroys the Empire, destroys the space station. He goes, now you're just making this up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's also funny. a robot chicken. It is a robot, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good I, one. I, I, yeah. Jackie and I were talking earlier about how crazy it is that there's all these promotions out now. Like I saw... Subway is doing yeah, a thing Subway for it, the Force going, Awakens. Come and buy the cup. Like a month out, There's they're doing promotions. Star Wars cologne or perfume. Shut the front door. I am door. not. So I what know is there's it? a makeup line. No. I know yeah, that there there's, is a whole, like, there's a makeup whether you're a part of the Sith or part of, oh my God. What's Star Wars, man? I don't know. No, Never no. mind, kid. You want no, hold on, hold on. Kid, whoa. Whoa. All, all kids know Star yeah, Wars yeah, because yeah. besides the Star Wars that we care about, there's also a whole plethora of... This is what George Lucas did. He created mass merchandise. Yeah. Interesting thing about about that is uh, when when George Lucas made Star Wars, he had to uh, get 20th Century Fox to fund the fund the movie. They distributed the movie, but he said, "You know what? As part of my contract, I'm going to keep the uh, rights to sell, you know, toys and the rights to right. make them, what make them." And 20th Century Fox said, yeah. "What toys? You're you're crazy." And the fact that he kept that is what financed Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The man I mean, we all remember thing. those axe wings with he the little freaking genius, the little I torpedoes mean, that kids choked on. The fact that he did that is what saved him from uh, being able to be beholden to any studio. He mm. could make any Star Wars movie any way he wanted because he could finance it through the toys. Working. I like actually the old Star Trek. I don't like the new generation crap. You didn't like Next Generation? Whatever. That was good. I like yeah. Next Generation, but I am a huge fan of the original. And I, I like the original. I like Enterprise, too, I gotta say. Because it was campy and ridiculous Enterprise was and good. funny. And I kind of jumped the shark. The other so ones, they kind of yeah. faded away. Well, you know, they... But I like the concept. I was fine with I think it, it should have ended with, with, with him on the bridge, and suddenly he starts to fade out because he jumps into another life. So <laughs> I think that's how they should have Yeah, that's right. Ready. Very good. I Dean so Stockwell is talking about it. <laughs> Very good. That's right. It was a show. I think it was, what's, what was his name? Was the, the guy who with the... Ziggy says... Scott... Um, Scott Bakula? Yeah, Dean, Scott Stock, Bakula, Dean other, Stockwell. Dean Stockwell Dean shows up on the bridge and says, ah, oh, Ziggy says you're good. And then he jumps, he leaps out yeah. into another So life. speaking of Star Wars and J.J. Abrams right. and Star Trek... Uh, what do we think of like the Star Trek movies, the new Star Trek movies, I and, and just breaking the timeline Ooh. because they just want to start over? This is where I've got to turn down Ross's mic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's I'm right. on, because on he's going to get a little heated. He, what are you talking he, about? Because it's, I mean, they have the right to do whatever they want. That's true. Look at all the people that have invested in the Star Wars extended universe, and basically they've just been told, "Meh, doesn't You're exist." You're absolutely right there. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. It doesn't so, exist. So this is very exactly the it same. It is exactly the same. So I don't have a problem with the idea of a time travel incident created a new universe in which we don't know what's going to happen. So it's all new stories and an all new crew. Fine. Go ahead and 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 start a new series with the same characters, and away you go. Nothing wrong with that. And the first movie was, in fact, very enjoyable. Did you tell me you didn't get a big lump in your throat when Spock turned around when you saw him for the first time on that frozen planet? Um, no. Really? In which no. movie? To me, that the was... The first movie. That because was, first that the was like movies. the moment when Obi-Wan first... 2009. ...leans because... down to R2-D2 for me. It was the same kind of thing. <gasps> I have to say that the so. two new Star Trek movies left me feeling so bored 
and well, you're a kind of, I felt it sort of, what was the point you're of these movies? Board. And one, my biggest complaint is that they sent down the uh, linguistics officer to fight the most dangerous man in the universe. The, uh, Ohura. Yeah. yeah and, and, and Star oh, Trek into darkness. So, because it's a woman. No, no. No, it's because she's, <laughs> she's, she's a linguist. No. Damn. She's a linguist. <laughs> <laughs> send down, she's she's send down a red shirt. I'm sorry. No, no, send no, down no, a security no, guy. She was an expert on their culture and she language. Also, yeah. So, so while not, Spock, no, Super no, Spock, no. is fighting Super Khan. Yeah, but they weren't going they're gonna there send to send fight. Yes. They were going Excuse me. To could, can you just stop fighting for a second so we can talk about culture? Come on. What? Because he's got a penis? No. No. And does he? I'm not sure about that. That that's an open topic. Hey. In the movie. In the movie. At the end of the movie. It is not about talking. It is not about, it's about trying punching. to come to an understanding, which is what Star Trek is all about. Wait a minute. What are, you about... are you talking about the second movie? When they... First movie. Okay. No, no. We're He's talking, talking about, Star about the Trek first movie on uh, It's all the same to me. No. Which He's one talking was about the landing party on Klingon, yes? No, I'm went... talking about when Khan and Spock so, are okay, duking so it out on the little movie. Second movie. Thing. End of the, end of the, the second, second movie. Okay, the only reason they sent Okura is because she was the only one that Spock would listen to. No. Yeah. Oh, that's true. No. Yeah, that's true. Yes. But but no, that's yes. the point. Yes. Because it was about that, that is true. Oh, no. Time out. I know that's a She's bizarre the only concept. one you would listen to. <laughs> no, absolutely. So not. what was she supposed it to do? Was. Go down there and say, "Spock, stop, stop punching him, so he can punch you." No, no Spock she was, was, appealing she was to supposed to do exactly what no. she ended Spock? up doing. What are you going to say, Scotty? Spock, stop! No, bang, he's yeah. dead. I like it. Actually, only Okura could. Spock was losing, and she went down there for no apparent reason other than to have her in that scene. That's right. It was not to stop Spock. Because Spock was it not could winning. Possibly, it Spock could have been that, but if we're going to talk about sexism, it was about putting Zoe there in the scene. Sexism. Now you're talking about two people who have already been established, are deeply and entwined with each other, and no if sense. she thought, for whatever reason, she could help him, it don't was you not think her she? Call. Fair enough. I'm not saying it was no, her it was call not to her make. Call. So there's but no, there was no logic to it. She could have gone there thinking in a mad, crazy moment of passion. I've got to do something. Reverse sexism. Let's throw a no. Deanna Troy is sexism. I do not. Tasha Yar gets sent down to help. What's so bizarre is how hard you're fighting against this. It's like one's one like the scene. Come on. No, because it's because tons of legitimate reasons. It was a terrible movie. You're not addressing the movie. It's like why does anybody focus on Jar Jar Binks with episode one? Really? No, but why? Why, why, why don't we? Why don't we? Like Jar Jar but yet, no. <laughs> it's because it's the worst thing in the movie. Because we don't say, well, oh, so you're Natalie Portman. The worst thing in the movie. No, I think I think that, she is one of the worst things in the movie. No, having having Spock well, say, "Come," but this is one of the worst things in the movie. This is. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a penis. I can't participate in this conversation. That, no, I believe me. I like. Have, I have no issues with women. And they could. Just, they could have sent a red no shirt. Issues. They could have sent Tar Tasha Yar down uh, as the security to do backup. Because she was practically a dude. Oh, 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 excuse me. That's so that she, that's what you're so thinking, she is strong. No, she's no, that's what you're pretty, saying. So she she's, she's strong. So what? She's like a man. Have you seen Columbia? Come on. That woman can kick butt. I think you just I'm lost sorry. your entire argument, actually. Probably going to get a noise complaint. That's quite possible. <laughs> it's going to be and me. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, Have you seen all the losers? Have you seen Columbia? Columbia? Losers would, no, I love her. I think she's great. I thought so she was a mediocre she Gamora. she's less capable but, than Tasha no, no, no. Yar? Because, she because she's a linguist. No, no. She's not. Her role on it the ship no is not a security person. She yes, is a linguist. Yes, I understand that. Military but training. Was no. Her? So that's yes. true. Yes, that's yes. True. they all have to go. Look, she says it's true. She can do push-ups. No, great. In that moment, in her head, do you think her motivation was, I'm a linguist, I'm going to go down there? Or was it her motivation? Is, she should have called know. security and said, "Can you send a team down there to zap the motherfucker?" Yeah. I don't so think she's she not was, in charge. I don't think it was a, a, a tactical decision on her part. I think it was, "Oh my God, we've got to stop him from I killing like him because Trek. we have you to save her." So wrong. I have the information and so I can wrong. communicate with Spock. So, I think no, it's it just to her. Just all kinds she of thought wrong. she was the only one who could do it. There's I think there's a lot of wrong. arguments for why it could have worked. The bigger, the bigger issue with this movie is that it was a complete mistake from from the beginning so you've rebooted the universe absolutely let's let, let's do new stories we have we are not beholden to anything because we have uh, a new universe where we don't know what's going to happen so in in the second movie they decide they're going to remake the second movie from the original series. With the most popular remake, character you know, ever. It remake. was completely a remake. It wasn't a total remake. It was a remake it was a lot in a way, not... shape, and form. <coughs> he's no Con. Ricardo Montalban. Come on. Well, he's you know, also right. not Khan Noonien Singh with blue eyes. He actually, he actually said, my name is Khan Noonien Singh in a British accent, which is yes. utterly ridiculous. Well, he could have had a British accent. Because you have Spock saying, accent. no, Khan. <laughs> 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 no, Khan. 
Khan, which made no he sense. He was in an orphanage was in, in uh, so to Pakistan. Back up, it was, the movie a, it was a remake was a, of Wrath of Khan, but the movie it was also was a, a back to a space seed, which was, yeah, that's how dorky I am, which was the original Ricardo Montalban. Right. Yeah. But that made sense. And they painted to look movie. like a seed. Yeah. Star Trek Two, the movie you're referring to with Ricardo Montalban, is universally regarded as the best Star Trek movie of the original series. It is a fantastic movie. Uh, what about the oh, voyage? Very, is it fantastic? It is. What about the no, voyage home? Star Wars is fantastic. Voyage no, home. Empire fantastic is fantastic. Movie. Voyage home. Godfather's fantastic. Voyage home. The con. Voyage home okay. is a great movie, but it it not doesn't reach the emotional heights of Star Wars. It's funny. You're getting to a point I was thinking about when you were talking about the original motion pictures. <laughs> so you don't mind the original motion picture, right? Star Trek: The mo- Motion Picture. The original motion picture is, as Chad mentioned, is not a exciting movie. Right. But it is the f- the only Star Trek movie that attempted to be something other than that is so funny. Yeah, because what I've read it a was really an attempt to be a where this are is we? A, almost in, in... as big a reach as the you're her. No, but the then. first yeah. movie was. I think they were no, going. They were trying 2001 to space one. Different from anything. Why are you so forgiving of that colossal mistake? Because because it was it trying tried. to be science fiction. Because he likes bald girls. There was lots of science fiction. They had a big for Moon Dragon. So he likes weren't. Feature. What year? 1979. 80. There was, yeah, there there was, was Silent Star Running. Wars, yeah. There was 2001 and there was Star Wars. That was it. The aliens. Uh, alien. Yeah, Alien. Yeah, hello, yeah. Ridley Scott. Yeah. Well, Alien, but alien again, world. all the mood. Ever Suddenly the mood movies. is really sort of morose. and. Yeah, Star mm. Trek was an attempt to say, the first Star Trek movie was an attempt to be a science fiction movie that was about more than just is the villain of the week. Which yeah, right, is what right. It became after that. And giving yeah. Shatner a chance to come out going, acting! Acting <laughs> with my <laughs> wig! I read a, oh, I read a really good article oh, about yeah, the motion picture where they were talking about the benefits of it, like what makes it a really great film. And it's because in that film, they're, do, they're doing what the mission of the Enterprise originally is, is to discover new life you know, explore the unknowns of the universe and and, and square that off. circle, right? Yeah, to go exactly. where no it's not, has gone before. It's not an ep- a canned episode like <laughs> the Wrath of Khan, where the Wrath of Khan is an is a TV episode blown up onto the big screen. But the motion picture is trying to do something a little more. It, it it's trying terrible. to find. Human but adventure. honestly, but you, are you talking about this like there's some crazy backstory that deserves to be remembered? Like it's an it was art a shitty film. movie. It was, Star- it was a it's shitty movie. Why they did it for money. Star Trek, the motionless there was no it's bigger picture thing. It was kidding? absolutely. It was an attempt to make a science fiction film. Just because something tries doesn't but, mean it succeed. And lots plus, of, there even, were lots of science yet, fiction. It was so well, successful. 2001 was boring. Because people were desperate like, to have a Star like Trek movie. movie. Anything. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but once another one came out, they realized my how awful the yes. first one was, and they immediately <laughs> discarded it. But the problem with Star Trek II, which is what I, I love that movie more than anything, is it set a precedent that has been followed in every Star Trek movie since, which is, let's have a big bad guy. Yeah, you're shrinking. You're shrinking the scope, right? So exactly. why do you yeah. why do you like Star Trek? Because it's about I don't, exploring. I don't s- that's just it. It's but about you're constantly making Trek. excuses for how they haven't achieved this. No, I'm not making excuses. I'm yeah. saying I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but they tried to do something and they didn't. I didn't say so it was a bad movie. Well, <laughs> it was people, a bad movie. I would it say the majority of humanity it calls a it a bad movie. movie. It was extremely boring. So I'm going to abruptly wrap this up. I want to thank my panel for uh, showing up. I want to thank my audience for listening, if there is one out there. And uh, if anybody... If anybody... If anybody has uh, feedback they want to send or any other reason they want to contact us, you can shoot an email to nerds at nerdstalking.com. 